two point charges Q1 and Q2 of magnitude 10 raised to minus 8 coulomb and minus 10 raised to minus 8 coulomb respectively are placed 0.1 meter apart. So as shown in figure, two charges Q1 and Q2 are placed at a distance of 0.1 meter apart. So let Q1 be the positive 10 raised to minus 8 coulomb and Q2 be the negative 10 raised to minus 8 coulomb. And we need to find out electric field at A, B and C. First let us solve this point A that is the midpoint between Q1 and Q2. So first let us discuss the theory to this question. They are asked to find out electric field due to multiple charges at a point. So according to Coulomb's law, the electric field due to a point charge is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 Q1 by or Q by R square. So for a single charge, this will be the electric field and there are two charges in this question. So we need to find out electric field due to each charge. So the electric field produced by the first charge E1 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 Q1 by R1 square and the electric field produced by the second charge is E2 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 Q2 by R2 square. So these are the electric field produced by these charges. Now we will apply this equation to point A. So first assume that a positive charge is placed at A, a unit positive charge is placed at A. So this positive charge will repel the unit positive charge at A in this direction and this negative charge will attract the unit positive charge in the same direction. So the electric field due to these two charges at point A are in the same direction. Since electric field is a vector quantity, then at point A, the net electric field at A will be the sum of these two electric fields since they are in the same direction. So we'll substitute these values. Electric field at A is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 Q1 by R1 square plus 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 Q2 by R2 square. In the question it is given that both the charges have same magnitude that is Q1 equal to Q2 equal to the same value Q or 10 raised to minus 8. Same way A is at the midpoint of Q1 and Q2 which means that this distance is R1, this distance is R2, here R1 equal to R2 equal to R and that distance is 0 0.05 meter. So these two equations have the same magnitude. So instead of adding these two, we can multiply it with the two. So this equation can be rewritten as Ea, electric field at A is equal to 2 times 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 into, instead of Q1 and Q2, we'll write Q by, instead of R1 and R2, we'll write it R square. Now let us solve this equation. Ea is equal to 2 into 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 is 9 into 10 raised to 9 into Q, the value of Q is 10 raised to minus 8, the whole divided by R square. The value of R is 0 0.05 meter. It can also be written as 5 into 10 raised to minus 2 meter. So 5 into 10 raised to minus 2, the whole square. So Ea is equal to 9 twos are 18, 10 raised to 9 and 10 raised to minus 8. It is 9 minus 8, which means 1. So it is 10 raised to 1 divided by 5 square is 25 into 10 raised to minus 2, the whole raised to 2 is minus 2 into 2, 10 raised to minus 4. This 10 raised to minus 4 can be raised to the numerator. So it becomes 18 into 10 into, here it is 10 raised to 4. When it reaches numerator, it becomes 10 raised to 4. This minus 4 becomes 10 raised to 4 by 25. So electric field at A is equal to 18 into 10 into, 10 raised to 4 can be written as 100 into 100 by 25. 25 in 100 is 4 times. 18 into 4 is 72 and 1, 2, 3. So 3 zeros. So 10 raised to 3 Newton per coulomb. Now we need to find out the electric field at point B. Point B lies outside these two charges. So do, let us assume that a unit positive charge is placed at B. This positive charge will repel this charge in this direction, but this negative charge will attract the unit positive charge in this direction. So in this case, the electric field due to these two charges are opposite to each other. So at point B, 
the net electric field at B is equal to electric field due to the first charge minus electric field due to the second charge because they are oppositely directed and that too electric field is a vector. So now we will substitute the values for E1 and E2. So electric field at B is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0. E1 is produced by Q1. So Q1 by the distance between Q1 and B is given in the figure. It is 0 0.05 meter. 0 0.05 meter can also be written as 5 into 10 raised to minus 2. This term is a square term. So whole square minus 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 and E2 is produced by charge Q2. So Q2 by here the distance between Q2 and point B is 0 0.05 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.05 which means that 3 times 0 0.05. So 3 into 0 0.05 can be written as 5 into 10 raised to minus 2. So the term can be squared. So we will solve this equation. Electric field at B is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 is common as well as Q1 and Q2 in the question it is the same value so it is also common. So 9 into 10 raised to 9 into the value of Q1 is 10 raised to minus 8. 10 raised to minus 8. This term and this term is common we will take it as common outside so the remaining term is 1 by 5 into 10 raised to minus 2 the whole square is 25 into 10 raised to minus 4 minus 1 by 4 by epsilon 0 and q2 is taken as common so the remaining term is 1 by 3 square is 9 into 5 square is 25 into 10 raised to minus 2 the whole square is 10 raised to minus 4. So except this 9 these two terms are common so to in order to make the denominator same into 9 will make it into 9 and into 9 so it becomes electric field at B is equal to 9 into 10 raised to 9 into 10 raised to minus 8 is 9 minus 8 is 1. So it is 10 raised to 1 into 1 nines are 9. And here the numerator is 1 by 9 into 25 into 10 raised to minus 4. 9 into 25 into 10 raised to minus 4 is a common denominator. So 9 into 25 into 10 raised to minus 4. So electric field at B is equal to 9 into 10 raised to 1 is 10 into 9 minus 1 is 8. The whole divided by 9 into 25 into 10 raised to minus 4. We will take it upward into the numerator. So 10 raised to minus 4 becomes 10 raised to 4. 9 and 9 gets cancelled. And this 10 raised to minus 4 can be written as 100 into 100. So 25 into 100 is 4. 8 fours are 32. And the remaining zeros are 1, 2 and 3. So it becomes 10 raised to 3 Newton per coulomb. Now let us solve for electric field at C. So this point is C. It lies on the equatorial line of these two charges or the perpendicular line. So all, again we will assume that there is a positive charge, a unit positive charge at C. So this positive charge that is Q1 will ripple this charge along this direction. So the direction of E1 is like this and the Q2 or the negative charge will attract the unit positive charge at C and its direction is like this. So the direction of electric field at U is like this. Since these are vector quantities and these two vectors are inclined at an angle, they will resolve into two components. So here is already a y-axis or a perpendicular line. We will consider a horizontal line through C. So the three sides of this triangle is 0 0.1, 0 0.1 and uh, when we add these two values, we will get 0 0.1 which means that three sides of this triangle are same or it is an equilateral triangle. Since it is an equilateral triangle, each vertex angle is 60 degree. So here theta is equal to 60 degree. Here also theta is equal to 60 degree. If this angle is 60 degree, then this angle will also be theta or 60 degree because corresponding angles because these two lines are parallel to each other and these two angles are corresponding angles. Same way, if this angle is theta or 60 degree, this angle is also theta because this line is passing through these two parallel lines such that these are interior alternate angles. So now we will resolve this, the E1 and E2 into two components. The horizontal component of E1 comes in this direction that is E1 cos theta and here it is E1 sin theta. Also the horizontal component of E2 also comes in this direction that is E2 cos theta 
and the vertical component of E2 will come in this direction E2 sin theta. The charges are same and the distance between the charges and point C is same. Therefore, E1 and E2 are equal. So, E1 sin theta and E2 sin theta gets cancelled. But since they are opposite to each other and E1 and E2 cos thetas will get added up because they are in the same direction. So, the net electric field at C will be the sum of E1 cos theta plus E2 cos theta. So, cos theta is same. So, we will take it as common cos theta. So, it becomes E1 plus E2. Now we will find out E1 plus E2. E1 plus E2 equal to E1 is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0. E1 is produced by Q1. So Q1 by the distance between Q1 and the point C is 0 0.1. 0 0.1 can be written as 1 into 10 raised to minus 1 the whole square plus E2 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0. Uh, E2 is produced by Q2. So it is Q2 by the distance between Q2 and C is also 0 0.1. It can be written as 1 into 10 raised to minus 1 the whole square. And the question Q1 and Q2 are same. Therefore these two values are same. So instead of adding we can multiply it with 2. So it is 2 times 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 Q by 1 into 10 raised to minus 1 the whole square. We will substitute the values. 2 into 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 is 9 into 10 raised to 9 into charge is 10 raised to minus 8 the whole divided by 1 square is 1. We can leave that. 10 raised to minus 1 the whole raised to 2 is 10 raised to minus 2. 9 twos are 18. 9 minus 8 is 1. So it becomes just 10 raised to 1 into 10 raised to minus 2. When it moves to numerator it becomes 10 raised to 2. So the answer will be 18 into 10 raised to 3. This is the sum of E1 and E2 but we need to find out EC. Electric field at C is cos theta into E1 plus E2. So cos theta into E1 plus E2 is 18 into 10 raised to 3. And from the figure we got that theta is 60 degree. So electric field at C is equal to cos 60 into 18 into 10 raised to 3. Cos 60 is 1 by 2. So it becomes 1 by 2 into 18 into 10 raised to 3. 2 and 18 gets cancelled. So the answer becomes 9 into 10 raised to 3 Newton per coulomb. So that will be the electric field at point C.